Hey, what's up, guys? So I uh, I had uh, some past experiences using the Ouija board, and um, I just get a feeling when I mention Ouija board, there's going to be some preconceived notions, some stereotypical, um, let's say, like judgment type um, attitudes or feelings about it. And um, but yeah, I, I get it. It's been uh, some in some circles. It's very um, taboo and uh, uh, wrong and stuff like that. But of course, the world is defined by each person and each person makes um, a decision on how they're going to define something, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, something that's good or bad, um, is good or evil, positive or negative. It's all based on definitions of the human uh, who's referring to something based on their own viewpoint. So it's the Ouija board. It's a tool. It's a tool to connect to other energies, um, other consciousness. And the person who's using the Ouija board, uh, based on how uh, they're giving off their energy, based on uh, based, you know, what makes them tick, for lack of a better uh, expression, that's going to lead to what kind of energies they tend to connect with on the Ouija board. Um, <clears throat> um, I did have a friend who used the Ouija board uh, with me and also his brother, uh, so it was three of us. There were some others also, but but three of us did it a lot. Um, uh, this was uh, this was a while back, um, just a little bit after um, my college age years. Uh, just after that period, um, I would use the Ouija board with my friends on a regular basis because we were all fascinated by. Um, at the time, we will call them ghosts, but I would say this would be. Uh, consciousness that is non-physical, and it comes in a in a variety of of manners. And for a while, it was it was more for fun. And you know, you move in the oracle. The oracle is the part that moves from letter to letter. And for a while, it was it was hey, you know, are you moving it? Like no, we're not, I'm not moving it. And yeah, it was hard to tell with you know the three of us who who might be moving it or not moving it. And and it doesn't move by itself. I mean, it's possible. It is possible, but generally speaking, the lion's share of the time is not going to move by itself. It's your own intuition or your subconscious that kind of moves it. If you were here, here, if you uh, want to know how the Ouija board works with regards to how the, the hand uh, moves the oracle, um, get a pendulum, make a pendulum, get a string, maybe about a foot long, tie something to it that's, you know, like a small rock size item could be a bolt uh, uh, a nail um, a big nail or a screw uh, something with weight and swing it Th this will work and this is really cool because it will uh, work for you regardless of if you believe it or not it will work and that's to swing it back and forth think of like the hypnotist left and right but you're going to swing it in front of you back and forth tell tell yourself um, in the front and back direction this means yes and then go left to right and tell yourself, this means no. And then spin it in like a circle and say, this means I don't know or I can't tell you. Like the eight ball, the magic eight ball. But this shit really does work. Um, it's basically you're communicating with your own um, deeper self. who Your deeper self, your higher self, your soul, your spirit, your subconscious. There's all these interchangeable names. This is words. We're stuck as human beings using words. At this point in our history, we're using words as primarily as the primary means to communicate with others and express ideas. Words are very limited. However, it's one of the best tools we got, at least in our in this point of human evolution. Words is one of the best things we have. So, as I was saying, so you're gonna you're gonna do that little trick with the the pendulum. And then you're going to start asking questions. You're going to swing it, and then just don't think about it. Just swing it with your hand and hold your hand steady as it's rocking. You know, maybe it's going in a circle. Just let it spin in a circle, hold it up, and then ask questions. Yes or no questions. And um, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised on how it, how it, how it responds. It's not going to be perfect. But it's, it's a way to communicate with a deeper part of yourself that has access to information that you don't consciously. Okay. <clears throat> Back to the Ouija board. So, so at first, you know, we weren't getting a lot of um, supernatural experiences, but we were. But after after doing it for a little while, I'm going to say a month or two, uh, we started to focus more 
and get more used to it, getting that mindset. And it's and when you're when you're really focused in that environment, it can make it more likely to occur where other um, non-physical uh, consciousness uh, becomes aware of of your energy and then uh, attempts to communicate in some mean, some manner, some means. Uh, a cold breeze is something that we often would experience. Was it in our heads? Probably not. Could it have been possible that it was in our heads, that the cold breeze we were feeling? Yeah. But it, it definitely, uh, all of us uh, would feel like a cold breeze. It would be uh, pretty consistent. That was one of the common um, um, experiences with the Ouija board when we were trying to connect with what we would call a ghost. Uh, we would feel a cold breeze. And after a while, I'm going to skip all the middle parts and get to where it started to get a little bit crazy. Um, and, and just for the record, uh, we were um, comfortable and excited to have these experiences. Well, two, let me rephrase that. Two of us were comfortable and excited. One of us had a more negative outlook on life, I guess you could say. Um, maybe a little bit more anger inside. So the energies that would connect with us, um, if negativity didn't really uh, come into play except for this, this one of us three who had a more negative outlook, tended to have some maybe quote-unquote bad luck, uh, negative energies following you around type of thing. It wasn't, it wasn't extreme, but... That we had uh, we had uh, some speculation that the the bad luck was connected to uh, negative energies based on opening a door in the Ouija board. So yeah, it can it can cause some negativity, but it depends on what you have as an as an energy, uh, like an energy bubble. And if it's if it's a positive, happy, com like calm, soothing, peaceful vibe, then the negative energies you're basically invisible to the negative energies. So. Again, I'm kind of jumping all over the place on this one. With regards to the things getting a little bit nuts, it was we were outside, we were sober, and we had um, two, uh, two Ouija boards. Now, it doesn't matter, one Ouija board, two Ouija boards, that's irrelevant. But I want to be as exact and precise as possible to let you know exactly what happened. So we had two Ouija boards, we were outside on a porch. Uh, it was dark, it was nighttime, and all of a sudden, um, three green glowing circles of light. Uh, very similar to if you had a flashlight with a green lens and you shined the flashlight on, the, on, the, on a table from above and it makes a circle, a light green light circle. There was three of those. Um, they were pretty circular, maybe not perfect circles, but pretty much circles, uh, and it was three different sizes. They were approximately the same size, but you could tell a little bit difference. And they they appeared, um, like, out of thin air. They just appeared. It was very, very cool. Like, I haven't – I never saw anything like that prior, and quite frankly, I have never seen anything quite like that at that, that, that level since. It was a one-time deal, and it was as real as real can be. Now, I also remember when they appeared – uh, maybe about every five or six seconds, they would disappear. Not all together, like poof, like you're turning off a light. Turn, no, they would they would separately disappear and reappear in different parts of the board. They wouldn't scroll across the board, disappear. They would disappear and then reappear over and over again for about a minute, a good 60 seconds. And in that situation, that felt like a freaking eternity. 60 seconds of that, it, lasts a, it felt like it lasted a long time. It was probably about a minute. Um, also, as it was happening... I knew there wasn't trickery involved. It wasn't some staged hoax. It's just my the friends I was with did not have the means, the motivation, or the capability to create such an elaborate hoax. Trust me, it was there was no hoax there. And I put my hand over top of the lights, about an inch above the Ouija board, over the lights. To, and I'm looking, and there's no shadow. It's like they're just like whether my hand was there or almost covering it. Boom, they were there. There was no effect. They, they would disappear and reappear. There was no effect by the, like shadows or anything. It wasn't like there was a light shining from above. So that happened. And yeah, it was it was really freaking awesome. So that would be the most um, um, out, out there experience with the Ouija board that we had 
Um, there was other experiences I'll get into at another time, but that happened and it was, it was, it was, it was different and it was interesting. And, um, yeah.